Joined now by NHL insider Frank Saravelli of the Daily Faceoff and the Frankly Speaking podcast. He is over in Sweden uh, for the NHL in Stockholm. Before we get to that, Frank, you had a big story on Patrick Alvin and Elias Patterson. You got a chance to catch up with the Canucks GM. What are you hearing on an extension? Yeah, so it was really the first, at least as I believe it, not tooting my horn, confirmation from the Canucks that as much as Pedersen had said before the season that he's in no rush and, and certainly wants to take his time doing this right, that this hasn't been something that's been tabled for the next number of months, that they are actively involved in negotiations. I think it's always dangerous and difficult to handicap how far along they are in those talks. I think the biggest question mark is, you tell me the term, and then I can give you maybe some sort of ballpark as to what that AAV ends up looking like. I don't think the Pedersen camp is very sure which direction they want to go yet. I think they see merits in both medium and long term. But the fact that we now know it's obviously been a huge priority for the Canucks behind the scenes, but you know, it's they're working on it and trying to chip away at this and trying to get it done. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, the, this was something we did not know until your report that uh, whether or not they would be talking this year and and we know that they are. Answer me this, and Blake's talking about this a lot these days, but the Austin Matthews deal and going shorter term, do you see that turning into a trend with star players, get as much as they can and get out to make as much as you can on the next one? Is that a possibility here? It is possible, and I think, you can sort of see the idea of for a player, why that makes sense, right? Because the more times you can go to the bank, the more times you can cash in, right? Theoretically, especially when you're of that elite nature and you see the way that in typical non pandemic years, the cap sort of grows at a very steady and healthy four to 5% a year. It doesn't take very long and a long-term deal for you to get left behind in terms of what the very top players in the league are making. So it kind of keeps you front and center right at the top of the pay scale. And I get it, but I think it's all really individual preference and choice in that at some point you taking more and continuing to go. And I don't want to frame it as the trough because look like I, I'm never going to knock a player for getting as much as he can. These guys should be making more than they are, quite frankly, with how this league uh, is structured and the cap. That said, um, that means you're taking it out of someone else's pocket on your team because most teams are spending all the way to the cap. And so they get that. And I also am of the mindset that, look, if someone's putting eight times 12 and a half for $100 million in front of you, which is probably pretty damn close to the range that we'd be talking in with Pedersen when it comes to an eight-year deal, is the difference between 100 over eight years and you know eventually maybe getting to 120 if you do two five-year deals, does that extra 20 million bucks change your life? Like, easy for us to sit here and say, because like, hey... I'll take an extra 20 million bucks. I'll just take like a, a tenth of that. Um, but that said, it kind of is like, as an agent always says to me, it just changes how big of a boat you can buy. And other than that, like that's kind of it. Frank, the Canucks obviously have had this incredible start to the season last night in Calgary, notwithstanding uh, but Carson Soucy out for six to eight weeks. We already know that they are said to be in the market to bolster their blue line. Now, uh, they were in Calgary of all places, and we know that uh, the names there on the Flames roster that uh, uh, are potentially available. But if the Canucks are truly shopping for a defenseman, uh, are there teams that they should be looking at? Are there names that are out there this early in the season beyond the Calgary Flames that you think are available? It's a short list. Like, honestly, that's really kind of it. And, you know, excuse me, you look at um, the spot the Flames are in. I think one thing that Calgary has run into so far is there aren't really many teams in trade mode in mid-November. Like, you can 
you you got to find a dance partner. It takes two to tango. And I think that's one thing that surprised them that with their sort of, you know, it's, it's not a fire sale, but there's a for sale sign out there somewhere. They're not hanging up the phone. If you're calling and asking about one of their defensemen and as near as I can understand it, they haven't gotten the significant or, um, you know, real, it's not interest. It's like, there's a difference between kicking tires and actually putting together something that makes you think. And no one to this point, as far as I know, has even made them think it's been very quiet on that front. So that has sort of surprised them. And it's kind of what the Canucks have been running into. Patrick Alvin also mentioning um, that idea of, yes, we are looking for a defenseman and yes, probably a right shot defenseman. Like, he then laughed and was like, but yeah, so is everyone else. So um, they've been on the hunt. I don't, at least maybe the Susi injury changes the urgency of it. I don't get the sense that they're particularly close. Well, and also, I mean, Calgary's four points out of a playoff spot. So, you know, we're that early in the season where all these calculations have to take place. Uh, I mean, no, I'm not. Sorry. No, I'm no. not buying that. Like, they're 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 436 points percentage this mm -hmm. season like they've got a long way to go if they're going to be in the mix and it's funny saying that because they're ahead of edmonton and yet we all kind of think like oh they're going to get it together no wouldn't surprise either of us to to say that edmonton goes on and wins 10 in a row they're 30 percent of the way there and all of a sudden they're right back in it calgary do you guys have the same belief no, no, and I think you know. But even if Edmonton yeah. wins their game in hand, they're still behind. But the, the, the Dorov news came. The Flames had lost six in a row, I think. Like they've won two of their last three, if I'm not mistaken. Now and so a little two in a row. Two in a row. You're right after the Montreal, and so a little glimpse of optimism. But it, you know, not surprising that some of those storylines kind of reached a fever pitch when a team had lost six in a row in the early going. Right, and not surprising that also people want to draw the connection between the mayor of the lower mainland in Dan Milstein and also Nikita Zadaroff, his client in Calgary. Like I get it, but like Calgary is not giving these guys away. So that's the other right. part of it too. And, and so as much as they may be kind of somewhat a little bit interested in, Hey, are we going to be able to play our way back into the mix? I think there's been a realization there the way this season has started that they probably need to change things up and do things a little bit differently, whether that's retool refresh, whatever R word you want to pick du jour. Um, that's sort of where they're at. Frank, we um, heard something this week about Calgary seeking a young prospector player to drop in the lineup. Do you know what the asks are on Zadorov and uh, Tanif? I do not. Um, but I know that in moving all of those pieces, Zadarov, Tanev, Elias uh, Lindholm up front. Like you're asking as a collective, you're trying to bring in and harvest as many assets as you possibly can. And I personally, this is my opinion. The Flames haven't said this. I think the best thing they could do is take a page out of the Canucks playbook and do what they did with Philip Ronick. Get some picks. The, Hor the Horvat trade's a great example. Find a young guy who fits their age scheme, younger, and plug him into your top four. But it has to be an authentic piece. It can't just be some guy that, you know, you think and you hope and it's it, like Sharon Govich, that type of thing, that can't be the guy. It needs to be a more established. Philip Peronik has been a 50, uh, uh, when I say 50.5, points per game player for 300 games in the NHL. That's an authentic defenseman. Uh, just before we leave this topic and because it came up last night is Columbus not peddling defensemen still. And Oh yeah. How hot is Yarmo kick line and seat right now at four, nine and four and his uh, replacement coach is benching line a and Goudreau in the third period down a goal. It should be hotter than some of the blondes here in Stockholm. Um, and look, um, I, and personally, the thing that I come back to with, um, with Yarmo Kekalainen, and like, go right back to the Mike Babcock situation. You hired him. You knew that this was a distinct possibility. It should be your head on the chopping block when we already knew that it was a significant hire to begin with. 
That's one. Two would be Ken Johnson and David Juracek. Ken Johnson had 40 points last year as a rookie. Really talented kid. Why is he in the AHL? Why has their number six overall pick been shuttled back and forth to Cleveland like it's a 27-time you know, flight per day kind of thing when he's better than most of the guys you have in your lineup and you're picking Peak, Boakvist, Bean, whoever it is that you want to go through in your lineup over your number six overall pick. Make a decision. Do something. Put a stake in the ground. Make a trade. So that part of it drives me a little bit crazy um, to see because I'm asking myself, give me a cohesive plan here. Tell me what you're doing and I'll buy into it. But we haven't heard it verbalized. And so the other part of it is then you go to line in Goudreau up front. Did those guys wake up today and forget how to play hockey? Like, does like I know like we could go on a whole Huberto thing too, and we're not going to, but you have to search for solutions, especially with guys that are on long-term deals that aren't going anywhere. You need to find a way to fix it, not necessarily just highlight it for everyone else to see. And maybe, you know, they've reached that point where they just throw their hands up in the air. I just can't imagine that we haven't reached the quarter point of the season, and that's all you can do. Frank, this Canuck start, Patterson, Miller, Hughes, we talked about Heronic, Thatcher, Demko. Uh, it got me again thinking about best on best, and I know that that topic came up over there, Gary and Bill Daly uh, holding court with the media. Uh, where are we on the potential of seeing the stars in the National Hockey League get a chance to represent their countries best on best? Well, I think we're getting close to announcing a 2025 international tournament and i call it international tournament because i do not believe it's going to be called a world cup of hockey and i think the reason for that is they haven't made a decision yet but reading the tea leaves it feels like russia won't be participating mostly due to geopolitical pressure from the other federations more than anything else you know i think if russia goes finland and sweden aren't going to be very happy so um I don't know what you call it, uh, you know, a festival, whatever it is that you do uh, with these, you know, a, a pseudo best on best. It ain't best on best when you don't have one of your superpowers involved in Russia, but I'm no Russia, you know, sympathizer. So you're not going to hear that from me. I'm just saying the league and the PA are certainly in an awkward spot in terms of dealing with their own players. Cause I don't see that situation changing, but that's where that's trending right now. We're like, you know, whatever it is, 15 months away from that tournament. And they're getting pretty close, I think, to finalizing a deal. Are we all old enough to remember Rendezvous 87? Maybe we yeah, just call it Rendezvous well, that was 25. Cool. Let's do it in Quebec City then. We'll get a little exactly. French flavor. And exactly. Be awesome. Um, changes to overtime, Frank. Uh, we know it's tabled until March. What's your read on the tea leaves there? Do you, uh, do you think they're going to uh, implement some changes to uh, not allow them to go backcourt, if you will? I think there's certainly some push for that. My first thought process in hearing it was, was this, is this broken? Like, does it need fixing? Um, but apparently enough managers who obviously are the stewards of the game uh, they, this is why they're here. They get to make that call. Not me. Um, there's certainly an appetite to do so. And I can't read which way it's going to go yet. But, um, personally, I like, I don't care what they do. Like just as long as we see less shootouts is my, that's all I care about. Lastly, how's Sweden treating you? Oh, it's treating me well. Uh, I got here Wednesday, so I'm just about 48 hours on the ground, and I've got about 36 hours left. So uh, it's a very quick trip. Uh, funny enough, uh, where I live in Philly, I can almost get here just as quick as I can get to Vancouver. It's seven and a half for me to get here, and it's six and change for me to get to Van. So uh, it just goes to show you, like, your mind starts to wander about whatever the potential possibilities are for more NHL and Europe action. I think it's 
you know, unless there's a drastic change to how everything works, it's probably a, you know, a mere twinkle in everyone's eye, but seeing four games played with four NHL teams and four nights, um, it's been pretty exciting. And they're obviously passionate about the NHL here. They'd be so much more passionate if they could get games in a, you know, at least a decent enough time slot to watch them. That's the hard part is I, you know, I'm basically waking up in the morning here and the late games are just ending out where you guys are. So it's not easy. All right, buddy. Keep on keeping on. We'll catch up with you back in Philly next week. Sounds good, guys. Have a good weekend. This clip brought to you by the VGH Millionaire Lottery. Order now for your chance to win one of 10 grand prizes. For tickets, go to millionairelottery.com.